The internet loves to argue about stuff, and bad information about handguns continues to get passed around as gospel by guys in gun stores as well in the comments section of my very own videos. How could you guys? So where I can, I like to jump in with bro science and hopefully come away with some understanding. So boraxes, how much does it matter for recoil control? Are ergos more important? What effect does a metal frame have? And what effect does a really heavy metal frame have? All that and more. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David and today is another episode of Bro Science where we test bore axis, we look at frame material, we look at frame weight, and we just try and figure out what affects what. Before we go a whole lot further, you may have noticed no ads playing on these videos. YouTube recently changed the rules to monetization so this video has no prayer. So today's video is sponsored by my patrons over on Patreon where for a very small fee you can get behind the scenes information and you help support make more videos like this. So let's talk through the theory then we'll get into the methodology of how we did testing. So for as long as I've been into guns, there has been the low bore axis tribe. And the theory of low bore axis is because the fulcrum that affects how much the muzzle climbs is much higher and closer to the center of the bore, hence low bore axis. So there's less muzzle climb, which means there's going to be less muzzle dip on upon return so you can fire your next aimed shot sooner. Where the theory starts to fall flat is muzzle climb is only half of the equation and while there is less muzzle climb for sure because physics are a thing, there is also the dip and the dip is going to be the same whether it is a high bore axis gun or a low bore axis gun because as the recoil spring compresses goes forward the fulcrum then becomes generally the first knuckle of your support hand as the slide returns to battery, it dips, oscillates a bit and then settles out for you to fire your next shot. So that brings up the question of ergonomics and can ergonomics tame recoil better than say low bore axis? And the theory about the good ergonomics is that you're creating a more neutral grip for the gun to return into battery and you're able to better control it through things like traction and shape of the frame where you're just engaging more of your support hand. So while the mechanics of the muzzle climb are generally going to be worse on a high bore axis gun like this P320 AXG Pro, the ergonomics and traction are so superior to most low bore axis guns that it begs the question. Then there's the question of mass. So we have a very massive polymer framed gun and the theory is that the mass for polymer frame makes the gun settle out of recoil faster so you can fire aim shots again sooner. But then there's also the material. This is the TXG grip module that I used in testing. The polymer frames will absorb recoil through deforming during the recoil impulse and kind of reforming, springing back into place. Whereas a heavy frame like on the P320AXG Pro with the brass grip panels is just a super heavy gun that does not deform at all. The recoil goes straight through the frame and into your hands. So those are all the theories that are in play here. Let's talk through the methodology. Now I use two drills to test this. The first is a bill drill at seven yards from a low ready, present to the target, fire six shots as rapidly as possible. I'm not necessarily trying only to shoot A's. I'm trying to run the trigger as fast as I can and hopefully keep all the shots in the A zone. And then there was two strings on a practical drill. I set up three USPSA targets and there were two strings from the low ready and it was the same every single time. So it was low ready, two to the left target lower A zone, two to the center target upper A zone, two to the right target lower A zone. And I would run that twice. We're gonna score that drill using Comstock scoring in USPSA, which is an efficiency rating, which is the points that I shoot divided by the time it takes me to shoot them. So an alpha is gonna be worth five points and a Charlie is going to be worth three points. There were no deltas, so it doesn't matter. So let's meet the contestants. For the low bore axis camp, there's the Glock 17 Gen 4 MOS. Its ergonomics are poor, the traction is light moderate, and its weight is a very light 23 ounces. Representing high bore axis lightweight camp is the P320, an X-series fire control unit in a Grey Guns X-carry frame with the SIG Pro Cut slide. The bore axis is high, the ergonomics are great, traction is heavy moderate, and the weight is about 26 ounces. High bore axis heavyweight polymer camp. So the bore axis is high, the ergonomics are good, the traction is, I would say, moderate, and the weight is approximately 39 ounces. In the high bore axis medium weight alloy camp, it's the same P320 dropped in an AXG grip module wearing lock G10 Veloce palm swells. The bore axis is high, ergonomics are superior, traction is superior, and the weight's approximately 32 ounces. And high bore axis heavyweight alloy camp, same P320, but swapping the lock 
G10 grips for the lock brass grips, which jumps the weight up to 39 ounces. The bore axis is high, ergos are superior, traction is superior. Obviously, the next biggest factor is going to be me, the shooter. I am a two division USPSA master in both production and carry optics. I have never competed with the P320 seriously. However, I did spend a couple years competing with Glock. So I put a decent amount of rounds on both of these platforms but I'm competing in open right now and the P320 presents more similarly to like my open gun, which I practice with all the time. And the Glock is basically this crazy alien shape that doesn't relate to any other handguns out there. So let's get started and look at the build drill results. First gun that I shot was the Glock. And if you look at the target, it was absolutely terrible. This is not some of my finest shooting, but rather than just show you how cool it can be if I get warmed up and show you what small groups look like, I am showing you the worst shots that I put through the Glock. And that data is still meaningful because I'm somebody who shoots a lot more than most. And if I can't just pick up a Glock and stabilize it well, it speaks to the ergonomics of the frame. At no point during the build drill did I think, golly gee, I'm so glad that this has a low bore axis, it's so much more controllable. What I thought was this frame is terrible and it's difficult to make it recoil neutrally and the results on the build drill show that with a very wide shot dispersion. Swapping over to the lightweight P320 in the Grey Guns grip module, it was super controllable. I, I felt very much in control of the gun. I could run the trigger as fast as I wanted. The dot returned to where it lifted from and the results were generally pretty good. Jumping onto the tungsten grip module, I got trigger freeze, so that was awful. But at the same time, the gun felt even more controllable than the gray guns. The ergos on the TXG are not as good as the gray gun X carry frame, but the added mass did seem to more than offset, so the results were still fairly good. Swapping over to the alloy frame P320 with the G10 grips, I had an easy time controlling the gun. While it was noticeably snappier and more violent than the TXG frame, it was also much more controllable because the ergonomics are just absolutely super superior with the G10 grips on the gun. And the results were reasonably good. Swapping off the G10 grips for the brass grips and all of a sudden the gun became stupid easy to shoot. The brass grips on the alloy frame absolutely make the gun super controllable, as much or more so than the tungsten grip module. And the results were also pretty good. Now if you want to see the, all of these guns shooting slow motion in side by side, that's an exclusive video over on Patreon. So if you become a member over there, you can check it out. I'll put a link to that video in the description. Swapping over to the crisscross drill, I didn't have great confidence shooting the Glock. The build drill had shown me that I don't have great control over the Glock, so I felt a little bit hesitant while I was shooting the drill. The times were unexceptional, but very consistent at a 313 and a 314, and I shot six Alpha and six Charlie. Moving over to the Grey Guns module, I felt significantly more in control, and the time reflected that as well. I ran a 282 and a 298. Hits also improved with eight Alpha and four Charlie. Swapping over to the TXG module, times were immediately improved and I have no doubt that if I actually got warmed up and shot the drill with the gun again, I could further drop time and keep similar hits. The times with the TXG module was a 276 and 283 with 12 alpha. Moving on to the AXG frame with the G10 grips, times were pretty good at 279 and a 292. Hits were also very good at 11 alpha and one Charlie. And finishing off with the brass grips on the AXG frame, I posted the fastest times at a 258 and a 275 and I think I could still make those go even faster if I spent enough time getting used to how the guns recoiled. But a couple close Charlies on the head box left me at 10 alpha and two Charlie, which is still pretty good. So looking at our power board, the build drill results were inconclusive and lining up the guns for their practical accuracy using hit factor scoring, the Glock was at 7.6555. The Grey Guns module is at 8.9655. AXG with G10 at 10.1576 and the AXG brass at 10. 10.5066 and the TXG module was king of the hill at 10.7335. So what did I learn? I learned that I really don't care about bore axis at all. It is the last thing that I really care about if I'm picking a gun based on how I'm going to be able to control it in recoil. I'm more interested in an ergonomic frame that is going to run well. So to that point, if you make me pick between a Glock and the Grey Guns module P320, which is three ounces heavier, significantly higher bore axis, but also significantly better setup frame, yeah, I would pick the Grey Guns module absolutely every single time. Because the benefit of ergonomics isn't just how the gun is recoiling, but it's also how easy it is to manipulate the trigger. The P320 grip module makes pulling the trigger 
for precise shots way, way easier. So you get the added benefit of recoil control with the gun that recoils neutrally and the ability to shoot the gun more precisely. So picking between the two configurations of the G10 alloy frame or a heavyweight polymer frame. I actually prefer the, again, the increased ergonomics, the better traction of the lighter weight, giving up a half pound on the AXG Pro G10 configuration to the TXG configuration. The added ergonomics are great. The gun felt more controllable. It is more fatiguing to shoot because you're soaking up more of the recoil with your arms and body, but at the same time, I just felt more in control of the gun. The heavier gun did recover as far as like swinging onto target, like because when you swing the gun on the target, it's not like a, there's not a smooth like stops on a dime necessarily. There's a little bit of moving around. The heavier weight gun did settle out faster when you transition it onto target. However, I just felt more in control of the gun with the better ergonomics despite being more violent to shoot. So looking at the AXG with the G10 versus the brass for a gun that would be used for recreation, absolutely the brass 100%. That was my absolute favorite configuration that I shot of any of the guns. The brass grips have amazing traction, they have amazing ergonomics, and the added weight of the gun, you get all of the same benefit of driving to a point, the gun settles down faster, You've got the heavier mass. The balance on the aluminum frame gun, I think is a little bit better. It's not quite as muzzle heavy, which is what I prefer. So I think that the, the brass gripped guns seem to work better for me anyway. So if I run through kind of all of the variables on what I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick number one is going to be ergonomics of the frame. Number two, right below that is going to be the weight of the gun. I prefer kind of a middleweight, uh, if not slightly heavyweight gun versus a lightweight gun. Right below that is going to be frame material, I guess. Uh, I do prefer the more linear impact of the alloy frame versus the kind of squishier recoil impulse of the polymer. It just feels more predictable to me, even though it is a little bit more harsh. And then at the very bottom of the list is bore axis. That probably matters the least as far as the consideration of trying to do any sort of performance shooting. So that's what I found out, guys. Let me know what your experience has been in the comments and we can start a conversation. I appreciate you guys and I will catch you on the next one.